okay so <coughs> now i will do integral over k and this 2 pi cancels this 2 pi 4 which leaves a 2 pi cube and that 2 pi cube i can cancel with this 2 pi cube so i have a 2 pi cube here okay this one left and then when i integrate over k the um, the k get forced to become q okay so here in this delta plus which is same uh, yeah, let me write delta plus is becomes q square minus mp square times um, omega phi 0 k mod square okay and remember delta plus has a theta q 0 in, in it okay so from this i can then read off what rho of q square is coming from single particle state that is 2 pi cube okay times um, yeah times this delta of q square minus mp square okay because rho tilde had a rho tilde is rho q square times theta naught so that the theta q naught that theta q naught i am taking away and then you have this factor this lorentz invariant factor okay so that's nice i when i look at rho of q square coming from single particle states it it is proportional to delta of q square minus mp square okay and it will have a cons nice consequence for um, the g tilde of q okay when i take the fourier transform of this object okay i'll give you an exercise to do the same integral which i have done in a different way so show that delta of q square minus mp square times theta of q naught is equal to 2 omega q delta of q naught minus omega q times theta of q naught so this time you will not utilize this uh, result here okay this one which i uh, used but you should now show this and then you can utilize to arrive at the same uh, same expression of rho of q square okay and proving this you should use you will have to actually delta of f of x okay where uh, f is some function of x and this is delta of x minus x naught over f prime the first derivative at x naught and you have to take a modulus of it okay so signs are not counted here so where x naught is a zero of fx okay meaning if you put f if you put x equal to x naught in the function it gives you zero okay and you may have several zeros and in that case we should put a label i to label those zeros and i should sum over all the i's Okay, so that's something you should uh, do and arrive at the previous result. Okay, good. So, what next? Hmm. So, um, what did I write? Okay, now this quantity rho phi naught k i will define it to be n over 2 pi cube that's a constant and i will define coming from single particle states i will define it to be n over 2 pi cube okay where n is a constant so what do you get you get rho coming from single particle states is 
n times delta of q square minus m p square. That is what you get right here. So, here 2 pi gets cancelled and you have only delta function times n. Okay, just to be sure that I am not um, leaving, I will just write as rho of q square is. So, now this is for the full thing, not just for single particle states, q square minus m p square plus contributions coming from multi particle states. Okay, excellent. Now, um, let us uh, look at the case where your field is an elementary field phi that appears in the Lagrangian. Okay, But the structure is the same. This You have here n and we had earlier defined for the case of elementary field phi that this um, omega phi of 0. Now, I am not using a bold phase phi, but I am using this phi. Okay. K, this is what we call as z, right? z over 2 pi cube. Okay, so, n gets replaced by z when you are looking at the elementary field phi. So, what do we have then? In that case, um, when I am looking at spectral density for the case of um, this elementary field phi, that rho of q square is z times delta of q square minus m p square plus contributions coming from single particle states, multi particle states, okay, where for that is what we are doing now. Okay, good. So, we got the rho of q square, which is nice. Hmm. Okay, let us analyze a little more. So, uh, let us also ask what happens to the contributions from uh, two particle states. Okay, so rho of q square. Let me try to plot this. So rho of q square at moment looks like this. Um, that when you have when you are at the physical mass. Okay, the square of the physical mass, meaning q square is equal to m p square. Then you have a delta function here. Okay, and I am just drawing it like this, but of course, uh, you have to take the, the limit in which it becomes infinitely sharp. So, that is the delta function. So, there is no contribution to rho of q square if q square is neg negative, uh, sorry, less than m p square. Okay. Now, let us ask what happens when you go above m p square. Do you have contributions coming from all these, all these values? Okay, and the answer is no. Why? Because um, where is it? Yeah, contribution from not from here. Where can you see? Yeah. So you can see this way. Mm, not here. Okay. So look here. Here we had a sum. Uh, we had a sum over all all the uh, states of which are eigenstates of p mu, and we singled out first sing, um, single particle states. And this brought in d cube k. Okay. So you have three integrals, and you have a delta four, which basically four delta functions, right? Delta of q zero minus k zero, delta of q1 minus k1, delta of q2 minus k2 and delta of q3 minus k3. So, 4 delta functions and integral over 3 variables 
okay dk1 dk2 and dk3 and that leaves behind one delta function and that is what you are seeing there okay in the final result that is what you see here now when you look at um, the um, the multi particle states let's say two particle state the delta function you still have four deltas okay but now you have integral over d cube k1 and d cube k2 let's say the momenta individual momenta are k1 k2 then when you integrate you have six dimensional integral but the delta function is four dimensional so it gets used up and you are still left with two dimensional integral so there is no way you are going to get a contribution to rho of q square from multi particle or from two particle states which will be proportional to a delta function that's not going to happen right because of this counting six integrals d cube k1 d cube k2 four delta functions so you are still left with two okay and that you integrate over these these functions uh, these these objects okay so uh, one thing is clear it's not going to be proportional to delta function the another thing that you can observe is when you do integral over k1 and k2 and it's um, yeah k1 and k2 let's we are labeling the momenta by k1 and k2 so pn takes those values okay so you have two particles and we ask so this this will have um, the this this state will have invariant some invariant mass okay some q square or k1 plus k2 whole square is what we are calling as q square and we ask what is the minimum value that q square can take okay and because you have a two particle state the minimum value that q square which is the sum of the momenta squared okay or 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 if or if you just think of these um, yeah sum of the momenta square will be the minimum value value will be taken when both these particles are produced at rest okay so imagine you uh, give a momentum for momentum q okay and then these two both the particles are just produced at rest they are not moving at all okay so they just have uh, energies due to their masses but there is no energy carried due to the momentum and that is the configuration which will uh, provide the lowest value of q square so what is that configuration so if q let's write as q1 k1 plus k2 these are the labels not not three vectors sorry k1 plus k2 okay because i'm looking at a two particle state so it carries two labels k1 and k2 okay and what's the minimum value the minimum value is when you have the three momenta of both of them equal to zero okay and in that case q square is just k10 plus k20 square but k10 is mp k20 is also mp square so that's 2 mp square okay so you see that there is no contribution to rho of q square coming from two particle states if the value of q square is lower than 2 mp square so here you have 2 mp square which is basically 4 mp square and then you start getting contribution from here there is no contribution from the intermediate values of q square and you as i said this is not will it will not be some delta function it will be some distribution okay so contribution from multi particle state starts from here okay so it will look something something like this now it is still possible that in a general theory which you are doing you have bound states okay for example if you are doing electrodynamics you can make atoms right you can you can have a uh, uh, or even let's say an electron and a positron okay you can form a bound state now bound state is more like of a single particle state 
right because that bound state is going to move as a whole it's it's not these two are not in uh, you, you you can assign a momentum to that entire atom okay you can assign an energy to that entire atom okay and you can see that um, that bound state as a single particle okay if that is the case then whatever i have again not if okay given that whatever i have said uh, before this implies that we should also get delta functions at those bound states okay so if there is some bound state in the theory for example if you can make some atoms with positron and electron or whatever then it will also lead to some delta functions okay it could be more than one depending on how many bound states you have so these delta functions come from bound states okay this is from our single particle states and this is this continuum is coming from uh, multi particle states okay this is good okay i'll um talk about looking at the fourier transform of um this 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 object in the next video